I now recognize Mr. Bishop for five minutes. I thank the chairman, and I've listened with interest to the conversation. And I've looked at the amendment in the nature of a substitute as I'm listening to the conversation. And I, I'm trying to net this out. It, it, I'm, I'm curious, and I, maybe I'd offer to yield to someone who could articulate it. Assuming that the party offering the support, the entity offering the support from China, is indeed an affiliate of the Chinese Communist Party, the government in China. What reason would there be for an exception to the policy of not sending DHS money to such an, to an institution cooperating with that or receiving that? Maybe, Mr. Ivey, if you, you're leaning forward, could I yield to you for, I mean, why would there need to be a, an exception to that? Gentleman yields. I, I thank my friend. Uh, just off the top of my head and in conversations with the University of Maryland, because you may be getting funds for things that are totally unrelated to anything that could be used for stealing intellectual property or some of those sorts of, uh, of, of uh, sure. R&D efforts. So for, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, so like a, a Chinese language. Uh, so as I understood it, the, the Confucianist, Confucius Institutes were set up to help people learn how to speak Chinese, help Americans learn how to speak Chinese. And part of that's an exchange effort. They teach it here. People go overseas to China and vice versa. Now, there's a possibility that somebody teaching in that program might be in, you know, some kind of Fem Nikita kind of role or something. But, I, you know, based on what I saw from the I, GAO report. I get it. I think, let me, let me look, because I just, yeah, I'm you, sorry. You're, you're, you're going to reclaim your time. I mean, I'm sorry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Use for us. So, so it seems to me, so let's, all right, take that assumption. Uh, Chinese communist government wants to send people over or get in, uh, provide funding to the University of Maryland to teach Chinese. Well, I think that's that maybe gets at it. The problem with, I mean, all sorts of espionage in general involves setting up links with someone who wants to have an influence operation and wants to develop and inculcate an influence opportunity, and then they want to broaden out from what seems to be innocuous to, to things that don't seem to be innocuous that we've seen over and over by the Chinese Communist Party in the United States, the most not notorious one of these police stations they have to sort of monitor and, 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 and um, control Chinese people or people of uh, Chinese extraction who are in the United States. I don't see a reason to be concerned about stopping DHS money from supporting an institution that is, in, that is permitting that to happen. I don't see a reason for a Chinese Communist Party facilitated and funded outfit to ever be allowed to establish a foothold in the United States. There's no reason that someone in the Chinese population or some entity from China not affiliated with the government to have that opportunity. And when you... And so, well, let me just make this point, Lou. It, it seems, so I was looking at the legislation to figure out, well, what if there's some problem? Well, if you look through the definition of the Chinese entity of concern, it's pretty tight. It's about things that are affiliated with the Chinese communist government uh, or supports their defense or whatever. And here's the key point. Look at the last subsection of the document. The way this works is... The Secretary of Homeland Security is supposed to ensure that this being performed because by saying to the, the, the college or university concerned if they identify such an entity. Now, that means DHS is going to have to know what this entity is, that there's funding coming through, that it falls under the definition of an entity of concern, and then the DHS says to that institution, we're going to have to cut off your funding unless you cease this affiliation. So it's not like this is an inadvertence or that, there's going to, or that they're going to proceed without any basis. In fact, uh, Mr. Ivey would know that as a matter of administrative procedure, uh, uh, that the, they can't proceed in an, in an arbitrary or capricious me manner. They're going to have to have a basis and evidence to conclude that there's such a violation. And then they warn, and only if the warning is refused or ignored could there be a deprivation of funding. I don't see the risk, a material risk. And in, and in fact, if you can understand, I mean, I don't think DHS is going to apply effort to that unless there's some good reason to do it. I don't see a reason to build in. I think the problem is we do a lot of wanting to seem to address something. We, the, the motto of my state is esse quam videris, to, seem, to be rather than to seem. A lot of times people want to move something like this so it, 
gives us a cosmetically, we're dealing with this threat when people don't really want it dealt with after all. And they want to be able to propose some sort of backdoor in the administration so they can just waive this whenever they want to. I don't see a reason to do that. And I'm looking to hear, honestly, in the course of this conversation, why that reason exists. I yield. Gentleman yields.